Okay, my name is Mary Boyer. I'm a disaster risk management specialist at the World Bank. This is Carrie Cox, a senior communications consultant with the World Bank team as well. And our session, we're going to be playing a game, but I want to take you back a few steps to how we got to this game uh, called Hurricane Hurry. Uh, funded by the European Union, implemented by GFDRR and the World Bank. So as you know, most of you know in this room, disasters have been very costly in the Caribbean. Uh, there's been over 20 disasters in the last few decades that have cost countries reconstruction costs of over 50% of their GDP and damages. So the financial implications of disasters in the Caribbean are, are staggering. Uh, and so maybe more than a decade ago, uh, it became kind of in vogue to start thinking about, look, we've been looking at emergency preparedness and risk reduction for so many decades. Uh, how can we also start looking at um, the financial costs of disaster and disaster risk financing? So it's become a core pillar of, of disaster risk management, along with risk identification, risk reduction, which are used to stop natural hazards from turning into disasters Disaster risk financing is a way to stop disasters from turning into economic shocks. Economic shocks that have adverse impacts on public finances, uh, deterioration of balance of payments, uh, add to the escalating costs of debt when countries have to borrow after an event to finance reconstruction. Uh, and then, sorry, there's some mistakes in the slide formatting, but there's also impacts on GDP, uh, depreciation, inflation pressures, et cetera. So if we look at Hurricane Maria in 2017 in, in Dominica, there were damages of over 200% of their GDP. They had a big international response. Lots of financing came in. They had CRIF payouts that provided immediate liquidity. But there's also questions of how to direct that financing to where it's needed quickly. So how do we very quickly start supporting the most vulnerable populations that were disproportionately affected? How do we support farmers? How do we support continuity of government services? These things should have, could be th thought about in advance. And more importantly, how do we prepare for the next event? How do we make decisions on financial instruments on their order of magnitude? How big the instruments are? How much they should be putting aside in their reserve funds? So at the World Bank, we started a technical assistance in the Caribbean, starting in Jamaica, Belize, St. Lucia, Grenada, to help governments think through these decisions. One of the first ways we helped them do this was developing a country disaster risk profile, which is a risk model that helps to quantify the contingent liabilities of the government to help them start making financial decisions. So it talks about, it provides insights on exposure, what the countries have at risk in their, their built assets, it also gives important loss metrics, like the average annual loss from hurricanes or from earthquakes, what countries should really be setting aside or can predict to, to have to spend on disasters either every year over the long run, or even it looks at probable maximum loss for those big 100-year events or 200-year events. So we use these metrics to start talking with governments about the size of their instruments. And then we talk about how there's not one instrument that can that can be the answer for, for reconstruction. It's a, it's, an, it's a matter of a risk layering approach, using multiple instruments strategically to access immediate liquidity cost effectively. So having a contingency fund, a natural disaster fund to address immediate risk or the less severe events, having access to a contingent line of credit or some pre-established loan instrument. And then there's a risk transfer for your, for your greater impacts like parametric insurance or indemnity insurance for your, for your public and private assets. But disastrous financing is also more than just instruments. It's about the, the legislative and, and policy environment around which these instruments live. Can money be executed quickly from the budget? Is it, is it used equitably? Is there enough data that can be used by the government to make informed decisions about the size of instruments? Um, is there loss and damage data collection? that you can use to plan ahead for the future costs of disasters. Um, so a lot of policies uh, and work with the public and private sector can happen around these instruments to make better decisions. And this is all part of a comprehensive disaster risk financing strategy that we're, we're working with governments to, across the Caribbean to establish. Okay, so these 
core, I'm getting to the game, I promise. <laughs> These core principles of disaster risk financing that we've tried to convey to governments through a lot of capacity building and training and, and uh, missions. and So data and analytics. Risk information is the keystone of disaster risk financing and making financial decisions. Cost effectiveness. You can make it so that accessing liquidity is not as expensive as it could be uh, if you try to make all your decisions after an event. You can make ex-ante decisions on the instruments so you can have access to immediate liquidity. Timeliness of funding. Speed matters for the, the emergency costs, but not all resources are needed at once. You're gonna need much greater resources for that reconstruction phase. Uh, as I mentioned, risk layering. No single financial instrument addresses all of your needs. And disbursement of funds. You need to have dedicated disbursement mechanisms ready uh, to, to access and, and disperse the funds to the vulnerable populations or those that need it most, or even the ministries that need it most. So we, uh, as I mentioned, we've worked in the Caribbean to try and convey these messages and under, understanding that uh, there's in governments always turnover and focal points are changing. So we're thinking, how do we communicate? How do we communicate these principles in a way that really sticks in your head? That's when we started developing this game that takes takes uh, governments through the actual decision making um, scenarios that they might they might um, find themselves in after an event. And we brought on Carrie, a communications expert, to really think about how we do this. So, can you hear me? Okay, great. Uh, so, communications has been a critical part of the process, as Mary mentioned. Um, disaster risk analytics and disaster risk financing content can be very technical, can be very complex. And because there are multiple stakeholders involved in actually implementing a strategy, it's not just the Ministry of Finance, but also the technical line ministry disaster agencies and whatnot. So there's a world that needs to come together to really implement the strategy. And that's why communications is so important to ensure that people Can you hear me now? Yeah, it is on. Okay, much better. <laughs> to ensure that stakeholders actually own the process. We've developed a suite of materials over the years, not just a report that kind of summarizes the strategy, but also videos, interactive PDFs, and the game simulation that you'll get a taste of today. Uh, one of the, the things that development partners asked us for was like a visualization of where countries in the Caribbean stood in terms of implementing various instruments and policies around disastrous financing. So one example of, of a visual summary that we did is this snapshot of where countries are in the region. And then the reason that you're here today um, is the game simulation, Hurry Can Hurry, that really takes people through what happens when a disaster strikes, resources are limited, and the pressure is really on to act quickly. We started with a kind of in-person physical game that had a board and tokens and whatnot that people played with. And we, uh, in at a, the Comprehensive Disaster Management Conference in St. Martin in 2019, we played with a number of government officials um, who really appreciated the experience. And then after COVID, we had to find a way to make this something virtual that people could still experience. So what you'll experience today is that virtual variation of the game. Um, that is now in hybrid format. And so I'll hand it over to Pablo and Daniel to give you a taste of what it looks like. Thank you, Kerry. Hello, all. You may recognize my face from the collaboration with the aerial acrobats. I'm not here to talk about acrobatics. There was a time when I was a full-time researcher uh, for the World Bank and others on climate disasters and risk financing, especially insurance. And with Oxfam, I was invited to go explain innovative parametric insurance bundled with credit to illiterate subsistence farmers in Malawi and Ethiopia. In their language, there wasn't the word insurance. So what happened when I went and started explaining insurance? I very successfully put everyone to sleep. Insurance is a very good sleep-inducing device. If you want people to engage, it will not work by just talking or showing graphs or PowerPoints. So I started having to explore new ways. And uh, with my partner, Jano Mender de Suarez, and others, we started creating 
playful ways to engage. So you're going to get a taste of that. If you want the full version of this, uh, our colleagues will tell you when you can join in the university. I think it's uh, tomorrow uh, for getting a better taste. So this object here, you may recognize, but it's not what you think it is. This is the probability density function of extreme events based on the historical record of precipitation. What that means is that most of the time things are okay, but some of the time there's too much. And when too much happens, there can be trouble. Now, if things are okay, they're okay. Can you all show me your thumbs up? If you do this, you win one point. If you do this, what do you win? Two points. It's good to win points. The winning player is the player with the most points. Now, if you do this and this happens, you lose your investment and you get a broken heart. No one likes to lose investments or experience a crisis. So what happens if you fear that this may happen? Simple, in the fiction of this game, you do a shield. Can you show me your shield? It could be an umbrella for too much rain or something over here, it's a shield. So I'm going to roll this object twice. Let me bring the table to the center so that colleagues online can see what's going on. Can I get a sense of how many participants we have joining online? Is it zero or more than zero? Um, in any case, here's what we're going to do. Those of you in this room are going to make your gestures. If you think that a six will not happen, you can do two thumbs up and win two points. If you fear that the six may happen twice, you can do two shields, which protects you from a broken heart, but you win no points. Like in the real world, if you're obsessing about protection, then you're not going to have as much money and other things as others. If you think, ah, maybe one will happen, you can do one and one. Friends online, you can play the game by typing in the chat. You can do two thumbs up or two TU. You can do two shields or two S or one TU, one uh, S. And you type it and then we see who's the winner. So you have 10 seconds or less to make your decisions because the rainy season is coming, as you can tell. What are you going to do? Two thumbs up, two shields, or one on one? Make your decisions and show them. I need to see them. Five, four, and if you don't do it by the end of the countdown, you're fired. Three, two, one, stop and keep it like that. I see a lot of double thumbs up. I see a few one on one. I'm going to take the role of the risk averse obsessive and I'm going to hook this double. So I hope you can see. Anyone who wants to come and witness, I'm going to read the number just in case it goes too far. Oh, it's going the other way, but I will tell you. Can you read the number? It's a three. So those who did thumbs up, you're happy. Woohoo, he's saying someone. Most of you are safe, but those who did double, you don't want to see a six now. Here comes the other one. Whoops, doesn't count. Woo, it's a one. No problem. In a different context, a one could be too much rain, right? But we're going to play only with the six. So congratulations, those of you who did this, you won two points. Those of you who did this, you won one point. Those of you, meaning only me who did this, zero points, but at least no crisis. Uh, if anyone wants to notice what's happened online, maybe some people there won, some people didn't win as much. Now we're going to do the same, but with 10 investment units. I'm going to roll this object 10 times, and you have 10 investment units to go for. You could do 10 thumbs up or 10 shields or any combination. Most likely you don't have 10 arms. There are some deities that do, but we don't. So we're going to give you a digital platform to do this. There you go. Take your devices, scan, and you will be taken to Hurricane Harry, a, a digital platform created by Daniel Stevens. Hey, Daniel and team. Uh, at Good Games to help you and the World Bank figure out how are we going to manage risks. So I'm assuming that you're getting in there. I see some faces connected. Those of you who are joining online, you can uh, use your phone device or uh, you know join as you can. If you can't log in, this becomes a spectator sport. There's a lot of, yes, the blue screen is the right place. Thank you. Uh, so you should be seeing a blue screen that says something like, welcome to Hurricane Harry, your game will begin shortly. Can you uh, wave if you see that? 
it's all good. Most of you are online. Some of you are not. If you are not, but most are, it means that there's something wrong with your device or your internet connection. I don't know. You can look at the screen of your neighbor or try to persevere. So here's what we're going to do. You have 10 investment units that are now looking like a, like a great question mark, if I remember correctly. And in the bottom, actually, Daniel, maybe we can share a screen to, to show what it looks like to participants in case there are some who are not seeing. Oh, excellent. Let's start the game. Uh, each one of you is, let's say, uh, some kind of director of a government entity. You could be in charge of transport, of tourism, of health. And there are things you can do to win points. You know, if you're in, head, in charge of tourism, you could, you know, buy, hire marketing people to advertise your small island in the rest of the world. And you can see Daniel is showing if you want, you know, six or seven or more. But you could also invest in protection, for example, retrofitting the port so that it doesn't uh, lose your tourism when, when big waves come. So you can go for three shields and seven thumbs up or one shield and nine thumbs up, whatever you want. As you know, I'm going to roll this 10 times. Yes. Uh, it doesn't matter. If I roll this 10 times and there's only one six, you need one shield. If I have six times number six, you need six shields. And we see what people are doing. Oh, by the way, you can go somewhere on the left, I think, and you can enter your, your name if you haven't done already. You may need to click the little pencil next to your name so instead of being anonymous, we know who you are. There, Daniel is showing. Okay, Karen, Daniel, etc. We will acknowledge you if you're the winner. We'll also know who you are if you took too much or too little risk. <laughs> so make your decisions. Most of you have been doing things. Look at how dynamic this board is. And let's give you a countdown. Daniel, would you like to start the countdown? In 10 seconds, you know, the rainy season will not wait for you. Hurricanes may be on their way. Seven, six, five, four, and there may be a delay, so you better do it. Oh my God, there we go, and time is up. Whew. Kerry, can I ask your help to, to do a, a protection here so that, I mean, it may still fall, but less, less likely. So I'm going to do this, and you can use your arm, excellent. Uh, by the way, this is a real die. It's not loaded or anything. Let me do this so it doesn't distract the players. First roll. Oh, of course it went. It counts, it counts, it counts, it counts, it counts. It's a six. It's a six. So those of you who have shields, congratulations. You just used your first shield, but it's gone. If there is another one, Karen, Ice Karen in the room? Karen is in the room and she really hopes that there's no more extreme events out of the nine that are coming. Next one. If it falls, it falls, don't worry. Yep. <laughs> and it's a one with a little bit of Curry's help. Good. That was the second out of ten. Next roll. It goes, oh, doesn't count because that was too manipulated. A three. No problem. We're doing fine. Karen, you're ahead of the curve. Next roll. Ooh, a four, no problem. Next one. Whoops. Another one, no problem. Oh, it's jumpy. Let it count. It counts, it counts. Another six. What's is there a correlation, do you think? So, Karen, I am sorry. What happens if we scroll down? Daniel, maybe you can help us scroll down. We're going to see Karen and others just got a broken heart. They just got a crisis. Now, in crisis, Mary, Karen, and others, if you have a coin, maybe, sorry, if you have two coins, I think is the cost of disasters, right? You could pay two coins to deal with the crisis. But guess what? You don't have that money. You only have one in your bank account. So you wish, you beg to the Minister of Finance, Rashmin, could you wave your hands? Rashmin is, for the sake of this fiction, Minister of Finance. And you're saying, Rashmin, can you please give me some money? Because I have a crisis. What does Rashmin say? Did you talk to me before the disaster <laughs> to try to see whether we could set up a... Ma I don't have like magical money that shows up when the hurricane hits. Everyone wants my money when the hurricane hits. So you ask, they don't give it to you. You're in trouble. Sorry, Karen. Sorry, everyone else. Lots of broken hearts. And 
<laughs> and we move on because the rainy season is coming and more shocks may come. It counts, it's a five. Uh, so we are, it's a five X and even it's seven. So we have three to go. Whoa, it's jumpy, doesn't count. It counts on another one. And two to go. It counts, it counts. A two, okay, there's no evil monsters from the bottom. <laughs> and one last row. As of now, huh, Poseidon is the likely winner. What are the chances of Poseidon winning? By the way, who's Poseidon? <laughs> Mr. Minister of Finance is also the acting director. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, if Poseidon experiences a shock like everyone else, then broken heart, because he may be friends of the Minister of Finance, but the, make, the money is not there, no matter how much friendship you have. And in that case, we have Vitor, Daniel, Maricar, and Mel to be the victors. What are the chances? One in six. And some of you are rooting for him to fall. This is what happens in politics, right? Everything depends on everything. Can you believe that there are people who wish evil on a colleague? Have you seen that behavior in real world? Yes, of course, it happens. There we go. Last roll. It counts, it counts. A two. So your unhappiness means, don't worry, most of you were going to have the number of thumbs up that you were going to have regardless of how much you have invested in shocks. Of course, the real world is much more complicated than that, right? Are the rules clear? We move on to the next round. And Daniel, if you want to show season two, notice that the balance is 11 coins. So you, again, can buy you know 10 thumbs up or 10 shields or any combination. Each one you buy costs one coin, so we're going to be left with only one coin. Now, you can start, but I have news for you. I have unfortunate news for you. Most of the time, things are okay. But sometimes, unusual things can happen. For example, there could be an El Nino season that increases the chances of drought in Zimbabwe, where I used to do work for my PhD. There could be extreme temperatures making a mess and melting all your infrastructure. There could be a very strong hurricane season. So after you have made your decisions of how many thumbs up and how many, and I see that some of you are, who cares what Pablo is explaining? I'm going to start investing. But I'm going to have a deck of cards here. There's many cards. Most of the cards say no hurricane. Because for the fiction of this game where you are director of tourism or director of health or director of transport or something in a small Caribbean island, most years have no hurricanes. But sometimes, my friends, sometimes you get a small hurricane. This is an eight-sided die, which I am going to show you. So it's not six sides. It's an eight-sided die. So if a six or more happens, instead of rolling this object, we're going to roll this object. And if a seven happens, you need a shield. And if you don't have a shield, so maybe you're going to leave it as is, or maybe we're going to begin to see some people say, ah, just in case this one comes, I need more shields. But guess what? That's not the worst case scenario. Very occasionally, instead of a small hurricane, you get a big hurricane. What does a big hurricane look like? I will show you. It's a 20-sided tie. <laughs> so you may get very lucky and we roll a 2, a 4, a 5, a 1, and there's no trouble. But you could get a 20, you could get a 17, you, and if that happens, every time a 6 or more happens, you need a shield. Now this is, oh thank you, this is very unlikely. Now, you don't know the probability density function of this, but I can show you that most of the cards are yellow, but some of the cards are big. Yeah? And so on. Now, the insurance company has all the information about the models because they're very good at analyzing. Your National Meteorological Service is not exactly used to having a good communication with the finance minister and the director of transport for the purposes of should you do this or that. We're trying to change that. Thank you, World Bank colleagues. So 
you have to make your decisions before the deadline and before you know which of these cards will come up. Have you made your decisions? Let's give you five more seconds in case you want to revise your number of shields. I do notice that there are more shields than before, though. That's very interesting. Daniel, would you like to start the countdown? Ten. And can you scroll down? I'd like to see what... Oh, sorry. Ooh, Daniel forgot to buy his shields. <laughs> Thank you. And we see that there are some people... Ooh, advice time is up. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Natalia, you were maybe dealing with a family health emergency. I don't know. Things happen, but some... Can I see the scroll down, Daniel? Sorry. Because I want to see who got the most shields. Oh, Natalia, here. Sorry, I got it wrong. Just last minute. Oh my god, I need shields! This may be too many shields if we get one of those. But Natalia saying, you know what? I don't like broken hearts. So, Natalia, we're going to simulate that you embody the complexities of nature. And through your management of complexity, we will see which of these cards is the one. Oh, it's a small hurricane. So I'm going to roll the eight-sided die eight times. Now, I don't know if she was playing with the gods, because again, it's the least likely, but it is what it is. So, Daniel, are you ready to adjust to the eight-sided die? You got lucky. Ah, uh, yes, just think this may be as jumpy as the other one. There we go. A four. No problem. Some are happy. And by the way, notice that even Poseidon went for more shields. <laughs> but overall, you all went for more protection, and it's turning out to be potentially a good idea. A six. First shield, which everyone had, has been used. Third one. It counts, it counts. Oh, it's in a dead angle, so it doesn't show. It fell like this between the cracks, so I have to roll it again. Three. No problem. There we go. Oh, it counts if you... Oh, where did it go? Oh, there. it's an eight. And I have witnesses here who don't... Yeah, Because, you know, sometimes people report what isn't. Another eight. Holy smokes. Okay, Poseidon is ahead of the curve, but has run out of protection. Mm. A seven. That's your revenge. <laughs> so many of you have run out of shields. Can we scroll down, Daniel? Look, Poseidon is in crisis. Right now, he's seeing a signal, a, a little uh, window that says, you're in crisis. If you pay two coins, you can avert some of the crisis, which is you don't get a broken heart, but you still lose one of your thumbs up. But it didn't work because despite his connections to the minister, there is no mechanism in place to move money fast. Thank you, Daniel. And we move on to the... We're halfway through. You got kind of unlucky. The chances of getting... Let me ask, what is the probability of rolling three extreme events in an eight-sided die. You're cranking your numbers, but it's, it's calculable, but it's not that easy, right? Those are the kinds of calculations that analysts like Mary and, uh, and everyone in this sector is trying to do. Okay, moving on. Six out of ten. A seven. <laughs> A crisis has occurred to Daniel. <laughs> and this is what he sees. Taking me the action, pay to avert. But it wasn't doable. He had no money. A three. Tamires is excited. Notice that many of you have been losing investment, have uh, hearts broken, but you still have a little bit of investment left, right? We have two to go. An eight. A crisis has occurred. Look at you. Almost all of you have lost everything. Tamires, congratulations. You seem to be the only one who has anything left. And last roll. A two. So, end result. Tamires, are you here, Tamires? 
maybe Tamiris is one of the online players. See, only four or so players playing online. You have all been outperformed by the director who is you know, working from home because of a sick child or something. So what have we learned? We have learned that when you don't know whether this or this or that, you, like, you may invest a little bit more in protection, but not enough. That's what always happens. It would not be smart to plan for this or this every year because you know what? You could most of the time not need that. And then someone says, hey, the nurses need more salaries. The teachers need uh, better classrooms. The firemen need a new track and on and on. So what we're going to do now, by the way, can you tell me what time we should end? In? I have 20 minutes. All right, excellent. So what we're going to do now is to give you a taste of what will happen if you join the full session. Can you remind us when the full session is? Tomorrow? At 9.30, in one of the rooms that you can find in the agenda. Hurricane Harry. What you're going to experience now is a very light touch version of what will happen then. Here's what we're going to do. You will self-organize, if you're in this room, you will self-organize in groups of about four or five. If needed, rotate your chair, find your partner. It's okay to be three or, or six, but it's better to be four or five. Players joining us online, you can talk to each other in the chat. And what we're going to do is to invite you to make individual decisions, because you can get as many shields as you want. Even if she wants you to get more shields, you're like, you're, I'm the director, don't tell me what to do. But you're part of the same cabinet. And as part of the same cabinet, you want your other ministers to not take too much risk or too little risk because you want your entire nation to do well. If everyone is not buying protection with shields, then any shock will deplete the Minister of Finance. Now, the interesting thing is that, Daniel, could we advance to the next season, please? In the next season, like before, you all start with 11 coins. And... Uh, when you start with 11 coins and you're likely to need 10 for the season, each one has one coin. With the leftover coins, you can keep it for the future or you can buy some kind of financial protection. In the fiction of this game, we will give you access to certain forms of insurance. What is an insurance mechanism? Very simple. There's someone who has a lot of money out there. Someone or someone's. And they're willing to take your money <laughs> if occasionally they give you money when something happens that is pre-agreed, such as a hurricane category four or bigger hits your island, da 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 da, da. And then if you paid one before the season, before the countdown, then should that event occur, they give you more than you put in. On average, they make money, right? Most of the time they take your money, no hurricane, they keep the money. Sometimes they take your money, whoops, hurricane, they give you way more than you gave. Because you don't have too much money, that may be a good deal depending on the deal. So this is what's going to look, to look like. You will self-organize, for example, you four could be a team, you four in the back could be a team. I don't know. You will have to self-organize. You cannot be more than five, otherwise you have too much money. Four or, uh, five or less is okay. If you're alone, you're guaranteed to not be able to buy insurance, which is what happens that's why we have the CRIF. Uh, they can tell you more when you come to the session, but if you pool, if you aggregate uh, many people, it's easier to get cheaper insurance deals. That's more complicated than the game captures, but we have a fancier version of a game uh, for ARC for the Africa Risk Capacity, which also shows that. So each of you is going to, like before, make your individual decisions, like before, we will draw from this deck of cards where most of the cards are no, uh, no trouble. And before the countdown, in addition to making these decisions, you will have to have made a decision as to how much insurance to buy if you want to buy insurance, which you don't have to. Daniel, do you have the screen that shares the, the two offers for insurance products? Here we go. Small insurance policy. If a hurricane of category two or higher 
makes landfall in your country. And for the sake of this game, we'll imagine that each one of you is in the same uh, country or experiences the same. Uh, and a director experiences a crisis, you get six coins. You meaning the Minister of Finance, which in the real world is a person that is not you. In the fiction of this game, we could say that it's a, the prime minister is gone, so there's a democratic decision-making process and you vote or whatever you want, and then you decide who gets the coins. It's more complicated than that in the real world. It's a good idea to have a, a plan ahead of time on how to use the money. But it covers this season only. So you pay two, sorry, you pay one coin, which looks pretty affordable, and then you get that. Otherwise, you can go for the big insurance company uh, policy, which costs three coins. Most of you will be able to afford it. Uh, and this is if a carrier one or more makes landfall, you get five, sorry, one, two, or three. So the small one, the one like the one we just experienced. But if it's a category four or five, this one, then uh, you get 10 coins, which is enough to deal with many more shocks. At the end of the game, the winning team for the fiction of this practice will be the, the team with the most thumbs up. If there's a tie, the winning team is the team with the most coins. Is it clear? Stand up, everyone. Now, find others and make groups of five or if needed less. You have 10, sorry, you have half a minute. People online, you're playing as a team. And once you have found your partners, you may sit down and start talking about your decisions. Is everyone's working? Refresh and see if it... It may be an issue with your Wi-Fi because everyone else is working, so the thing is working. That's good. Uh, oh, so I, I, will, I will have a countdown, and by the end of the countdown, I have to come here with coins or something like that. But I'm going. It's, it's probably better for the flow to stop and then give you a bit more time. Hello, team. Uh, hello, players. I have information for you. There will be a countdown. By the end of the countdown, however many thumbs up and shields, etc. Also, one member of your team will be the emissary and come here with a piece of paper saying, give a name to your team. You can call yourself Team 1, Team Barbuda, whatever, and write which insurance policy you buy so that I know uh, which, which team got what insurance. And if you don't bring anything before the countdown, no insurance for you. The deadline is coming in less than five minutes. You have, hello, hello, you have three minutes to make your decisions. Uh, you actually could afford more than one, but for the sake of this game, the system is not prepared for giving you more than one policy. You have 90 seconds. <laughs> I got my first invoice from Team Granada. You have 60 seconds.
and suddenly everyone discovers that they don't have pen and paper. I can give you paper if you want. I don't have pen. Look how generous I am. You have 40 seconds. It's just your name of your team and which insurance if you want any. Here comes my second insurance policy invoice. Safe side. You have 20 seconds. I don't have it, my friend. I'm sorry. Uh, let's give you this, but you have 10 seconds. Okay, you have to write it fast. Here's a pen. Five, four, look at his pressure. Oh my God, I need the signature of the minister. Three, two, when I say stop, I close my hand. If it's not there, it's not there. Three, two, one, and deadline. Ah! I wanted it to be left out, but he beat me. You were smart. You're friends with the bank um, security guard and sn snuck through the closing door. So I have one, two, three, four teams, five teams. So one of the teams didn't buy insurance. Team online, I cannot see what you're doing, but if you did buy insurance, maybe through Daniel you can express it. Otherwise, we'll assume that because of lack of coordination or something, it didn't happen. Do we know, Daniel, if the online team interacted and made a decision? I, I apologize to you, as is often the case. If you're far away, I don't remember that you exist. I, I don't see any. There you go. Those who are far away didn't buy insurance. So Daniel himself doesn't have insurance. So I'm going to tell you uh, the last team. I have no glasses, so I have a hard time reading the name of the of the team six something yields what's the name of your team yes they got small insurance safe side got big insurance so you have three less coins than you thought you had you have one less coin than you thought you had team granada went for big and team hnd it's you got big insurance so a majority went for big insurance i am going to keep this in my vault Actually, let's put it here. And now comes the part where, again, we're going to do as before. Would you like to see a big hurricane happen? Someone said, yay, but most of you are like, actually, probably not. Because even with insurance, it's trouble. In an ideal world, you would like to see that one. Daniel, can we go back to the seeing how many people got how many shields? There you go. So Poseidon. <laughs> said, you know what, we got big insurance. I'm going to hope that my friend, the Minister of Finance, gives me a lot of money, should there be a need. Then we have Mary, who went for three. And most other players went for many more shields. OK, shuffle, shuffle. And again, they're all here. May I invite you to be the one who chooses one? Another small hurricane. This is strange. I, it's very unusual that you get two small hurricanes in a row when... Yeah, it happens. Eh? So, so what has happened? Can we go back to the insurance one, uh, Daniel? It is a small hurricane. Did you all get protection? Not necessarily. Let's look. Big insurance, see, category one, two, or three makes sense. Yes. So those of you who got big insurance, you're like, yeah, dude, we got it. But those who got the small insurance, well, if a hurricane category two or higher, well, what is the category of this hurricane? It could be a one. If it is a one, those of you who bought small insurance are like, hey, but I got insurance. Where's my payout? And the meteorological service, sorry, the... Uh, barometric pressure at the eye as defined in the contract is there so you don't get a payout. You're going to be furious. This happens often if you don't read the small print. You better get a good lawyer and a good meteorologist and a good financial advisor before you sign this insurance. So we don't have the time to go through the motions. If you liked what you experienced, tell your friends at UR and bring them tomorrow, 9.30. May I invite uh, Mr. Deputy Minister of Finance of Honduras to join us and share 
How was it for your team? I'm doing, you, you weren't uh, told ahead of time that you would be invited, but since you're here, I'd love to hear, how was it? What did you experience? How's your heartbeat? How's your cognitive work? This microphone is going to be used if we can activate it. They're turning it on. Thank you, sir. Hello. Hi. Uh, nice to meet you to everybody. Uh, well, uh, in our advisors uh, decide to buy a big insurance because uh, in the case of Honduras, uh, it's a area that have a lot of uh, probability to get a Huracan with any category. So that's why we decide to, to buy a big insurance. And could you tell us, if you don't mind, you experienced the game, which is a fiction. How does it relate to your professional real world reality? Are there yeah, similarities? It's just a game to learn about how works the insurance policy, but it's not the probability is different for everybody. No, that's, it's not the same like be in Brazil or or if your country is Honduras or your country is Pakistan, uh, it depends. Uh, the, the probability uh, is different for each country. Excellent. So, um, my friends, I'm going to pass it over to our colleagues from the World Bank team who have been working very hard to make it accessible for you, both in terms of how much you understand and then whether you can get the real insurance for your own country, region, etc. cetera. Uh, this person here, Daniel, can you wave, Daniel? Um, Daniel from Good Games uh, and Good Focus has been working with the team to make this game happen. If you want to consider using something like this, please talk to the World Bank team and or look up for Daniel, uh, Good Focus, Good Games. Uh, and uh, they, I'm sure, will be delighted to give you a taste of how you can take this kind of a learning experience and dialogue experience to your team. With super gratitude to you and to them, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Pablo. Um, I don't really have anything else to say other than to invite you to come play the game, the full version of the game that gets really exciting. You get to make teams, you get to be directors of tourism and agriculture and everything, and you get it gets really competitive tomorrow at 9.30. And like, like Pablo said, we've been providing this service. We primarily use it in conversations with governments. Uh, after we've uh, done technical assistance to build capacity, we sit down and bring together multiple sectors in, in a government and, and play the game to try and you know, mainstream the concepts of disaster risk financing across the government. Um, we also play it at, at large regional conferences and global conferences like this. So if you're interested, if your entity is interested, please contact me or Rajman. But hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. Rajman? Just want to say it's one, one additional thing. It's actually not just... Um, uh, for, for ministries of finance, it's actually for other line ministries to actually better understand the challenges, no? So when from ministry of finance perspective, the challenges you have to look at all the different sectors and the different types of risk, but why do you need to kind of give a little bit of money to ministry of agriculture versus disaster risk management, etc. So that's kind of where we would also take in the game tomorrow to talk about some of the challenges and the solutions associated with that. Cheers.